easiest way of looking at hard money is it's old school lending. Okay, this is the kind of lending that I learned about uh, through Blue Water, but I heard a story from my great grandmother when I was eight years old. She was a hard money lender. She had a few bucks in her pocket. Somebody was starting a business. She put a loan on their house. She put a loan on an asset that they had. She didn't care too much about the individual per se, as far as what their creditworthiness was. It was can they pay it back? What's the hard asset? Hard money, hard asset. Very simple in the real estate game. Um, within today's realm of hard money, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Anthony could be a private guy. He's at 12% and two points. We'd like to talk to Anthony. You could sit here, David, he's at, he only wants 8% on his money. He's a private guy. Then you also have companies like Blue Water and some others that are out there that this is our business. This is what we do. We have a lot of capital. You don't have to worry about us not funding, closing on time, a draw, any of that good stuff. We're a true business. This is what we do for a living. Um, you'll see that, you know, some of the stuff used by sophisticated real estate investors, not as a last resort, but as a first, so on and so forth. Hard money is the simplest form of financing that I have ever seen when it comes to investing in real estate, unless you have your own cash. And even if you have your own cash, a lot of times people want to use hard money because it lets them leverage that cash to a greater extent. You also have somebody like myself who's been in the business for a long enough time to let you know up front, good deal, bad deal, uh, you might want to renegotiate the price. I think your contract is a little bit high on what the rehab is for. Just basically a team effort on it. Um, the benefits of hard money, we can spit out all the negatives if you guys want, if anybody wants to start yelling all the, all the wonderful things that people say about you know higher rates uh, and points associated with a loan. But the, qu the, the quick close, the partnership piece, asset piece, lending off the after repair value. 30 second um, example, borrower goes to a bank, Bank says, you have a project, we will finance 80% of your purchase price and 80% of your construction cost. Not bad, right? 80%. Now, if I tell you that I can finance 65% of the after repair value, 99 out of 100 times, I'm financing 100% of the purchase price and 100% of the rehab cost. Is it costing you more interest and points? <coughs> yeah, out of pocket, <coughs> through the term of the loan, not up front, and get the deal done. Um, also, this is one of my favorite, negotiation advantage. For those of you that are newer to the game or have been in for a long time, you've probably heard that time is of the essence with these things. I've closed loans in 12 hours. You know what it's like going up to somebody and saying, I want to buy your house. I know it's, you're looking for 250. <clears throat> How about $175,000 tomorrow afternoon? Money in the hand really speeds things up. And by the way, I talk fast, I talk a lot. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna slow down, okay? Um, when you are dealing with real estate, when you're dealing with hard money, I can tell you how we look at things. You have to, look, you have to evaluate the loan, okay? These are the things that you all should be doing before even putting in a deal. I evaluate a loan the same way you evaluate if it's a good piece of property to pick up. You know, what's the maximum allowable offer? How much is the rehab going to cost? What are the comps in the property, you know, in the area? Asset, what's the collateral? Where is it located? What's the value? What's the scope of work? Did you have a contractor go out there or did you just do a drive-by? Did you look it up on, frankly, MLS or whatever it is, or Zillow or whatever it is? Or did you have a real estate, you know, professional go and run a CMA for you? Or do you personally run your own CMAs? <coughs> the B would be the borrower. Okay, I'm going to look at you. As we were talking, Julie and I spoke. If it's okay, I'll call you guys out. Not in a bad way, I promise. Julie and I were talking that, you know, she's new to the game. Would we lend to her? Yeah, I have no problem lending to somebody. We just need to evaluate who the borrower is. Okay? How many deals have you done? No? None? Zero? A hundred? Great. How have they worked out for you? I want to get to know you. It's a relationship. Okay? Borrower, investment history, exit strategy. You're going to pick up a property. Karen found one in Northwest over on, I don't care what property, wherever it is, whatever corridor it's going to be. That's great. How are you getting out of the loan? You're refinancing? Wonderful. How's your credit? Right? You need to make sure that she can get out. Oh, I'm going to sell it. 
okay, what's the game plan for selling it? Just tell me about it, we'll talk about it. If your game plan doesn't work, we formulate a game plan. We're a partnership, we're a team. Last thing is the customization. This goes back to making it work for all parties involved. We do 100% financing on deals at 65%. You gotta come with some cash to the table for closing and points. You don't have it, let's work something out. Okay, do you have other assets that we can collateralize? Are you looking for a partner to take care of this with you? Maybe we can split a little bit of the upside on it. There's a million different ways to, to take a look at this. Loan terms, anywhere from 12 to 16% with three to six points. It's basic. I don't have a matrix for you. I don't have guidelines for you. I have my gut, I've got my mind, and I've got my heart. We talk it out, okay? I'm not a, an 18 and 8 lender. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm trying to make it so you can get through your deal with the profitability that you're expecting, you want, and you truly deserve. But at the same time, I have a, a select rate of return that I need, just like you all do. Six months to three years, depending on the asset type. Do you mind uh, raising your hand if you're here for a true commercial, multifamily, office, retail, flex, industrial? Anybody? Okay. okay. I have one for myself. But primarily, we're residential fix and flippers, right? Or maybe fix and hold. Maybe we're long term holders. Maybe. No one's answering. Okay. Um, so typically, you're going to look at six months for a residential fix and flip. Buy the property within three months, you've done the full rehab renovation on it. If you think that you need a year, you think you need to reconsider how this works. And you've got a month for marketing of the property, and then you've got two additional months for them to get their financing in place. Six months. The longer you hold out one of our loans, private, hard money, equity partner, whoever it is, the greater the cost to you. We're not putting you in a corner. We're actually giving you the right amount of pressure to get a deal done. In the time. Points paid up front, three to six, and prepayments. There's really no prepayment penalty. What everybody asks for, though, is notice. Because just like all of you, you want to make it so your money makes you money. Same thing that we do within our business. So if you're telling me that you know, you're closing tomorrow, I get all the money back tomorrow, and then i got to find a way to put it back on the street. Same thing with you all. If I was to give you, David, if I give you $100,000, you know, if, if you gave me $100,000 today, and I said I'd give it back to you in six months and I'm giving you 14% on it, you'd be excited, right? And then all of a sudden I call you tomorrow and say, oh, David, I'm going to give it back to you. You're going to say, 14%'s gone. Not, it's not making money for me anymore. So you want to make sure that you're allotting the time to let people know that you're going to pay them back. Um, kind of went over a, a few things. Um, lender versus lender. There's Was that a warning or interest? In other words, if I gave it to you today, I would owe you 30 days more interest? Or yeah, if you, we would, like for me personally, depending on when we work out, once again, I don't have a matrix, I don't have a guideline, I have nothing like that. But if I was to say to you, okay, Stephen, you're going to you know, take a loan for six months, I want a 30-day prepayment, you said, no, 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 no. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that, I'm a 15-day kind of guy. I'd say, okay, then let's work out a 15-day prepayment. Because I want to make sure that I have enough time to reposition the capital. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I'm just. Yeah, we, we want to have enough time. Otherwise, there you know, it's just people coming in and out giving us money. And I think his question is, what is the penalty if he does not give it to you? If it's a 15-day prepayment notice, it'll be 15 days. Where's All right, but if I told you 30 days or 15 days ahead of time that I, instead no of six months, I've just got it. I, I went. Everything went great. It's been four months. I, I'm going into escrow in 30 days, so I'll be five months. Uh, no worries. You've right. given me enough notification. All right. So it's notification, not additional money like no, points. No, not pay. additional money. It's that we ask for a certain period of time so we can reposition the capital. We know that today you're going to get it under contract, and 30 days later you're going to close on it, so we're going to get our cash. So actually, the slide should say prepayment notification. You are correct. No, I, I'm just because the other things were like points. Right. Those are money out of your pocket. Right. This is different. Right. This is a, it's a prepayment. It's a prepayment notification. What this is basically saying, lender versus lender, is, oh, sorry, this was a previous one. I apologize. 
the typical loan terms on hard money, per se, blue water, were not typical by any means. And I, I can go into it a lot more when we go into some of the deals that we've done and potentially the deals that you all are looking at to take a look at. Lender versus lender is very simple. Go to a bank, lower points, lower fees. Cons, limited potential for capital possibly that they're going to give out to you. Uh, maybe it's a, a private lender who has not enough capital. For instance, we have guys that call us up and girls that call us up and say, can you table fund a loan, which means Blue Water give them the money, but Mr. and Mrs. Smith, whomever the, the lender is, doesn't really have the cash to get it done. They come to us. Um, you also have it where some of these fly-by-night lenders don't have the experience to do it. They might put you in a position that's not good. Um, they don't have the wherewithal or the knowledge or the time to get your project through to the end. For instance, everyone's heard about the guy in Florida that's got the cash, right? Everyone knows the guy in Florida is what, what people always say. That guy in Florida is not going to possibly be able to do your draw on time. I'm um, in by Monday, ask me for the draw. Out by Friday, you get your cash. The guy in Florida might not have it. Don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing if his rates and points are okay and he's a guy that you've dealt with and you're happy with. No negatives. But lender versus lender. Somebody who has it as a true business and somebody who has it on the side. We're the direct lender. We're the business. This is what we do. We have a staff. We have an office. We have licensed appraisers. We have contractors that, that are out there taking a look at things for inspection reasons. We've got title attorneys. We've got, you kind of name it. Your list of people that you want to have, we've already got them because we need to make sure things look. Do you guys have, um, like, when somebody's new and they're doing it for the first time, do you have the, like, builder's code or somebody that comes in and oversees the whole project, make sure they do it, and gives them their draws on time, or do you guys manage all that yourself? Um, we manage everything on our own. Uh, if it's a newbie, like somebody who's fresh off the street that doesn't have the experience, they can, do, they can partner with us, they can do something along that JV type of situation, but we're not going to just say, oh, here, Anthony, you might want to call, you know, XYZ company for plans, and X, you know, this permit, you know, you might want to call this expediter, and, you know, we really know so-and-so at DCRA, because we're not there to hold your hand through the whole process, because that takes up our time to do our business, but in general, if you get stuck, God forbid, you know, we're going to do everything that we can to get you out of the mess. Because, once again, if you fail, you fail. Um, have any of you used hard money before? So you're pretty good with the process? Do you mind me asking if it's a company or an individual? Company. Do you mind me asking who the company is? You don't have to tell me. No, it's okay. ACC mortgage. ACC. Okay, Robert. Um, yeah, he's he's got some interesting programs, some good some good programs. He's got he's a longer term on some of them. I don't know if you've dealt with some of the longer interest no. terms. Um, well, for those of you that are somewhat new to the process, I'm going to give you the basics. And and if you guys feel as though this information isn't what you want to get out of me today, please stop me and you know we can we can kind of scratch this and go into some real deal how things work. What do I see in the market, and some real deals that are, you know that we're closing? The one yesterday, the two today, or the one on Friday. You got no problem with that. Um, first thing is you're submitting an application. Okay, an application is very basic. This is this is my application, but my true application is one of you calling me, texting me, or emailing me. Where's the property located? How much are you picking that property up for? What's the construction budget on it? What's your after repair value? You call me on that, I will tell you right now if it's a deal that I look at. I'm not asking you for a CMA. I'm not asking you for tax records. I'm not asking you for a contract or proposal. I'm asking you for address, purchase price, rehab costs, after repair value. Those are the four things you need to do to get somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everybody says, I want a full package. I want this and that. Don't give it to me yet. Uh, give me the 30 second rundown of it and I'll tell you if it's something that we should look into. Address, purchase price, construction or rehab budget, 
out sale value or ARV, after repair value. Okay. You know those four, and I'll let you know if it makes sense. Okay. Um, I kind of go with, I'm going to go off topic for one second for the, the people that are new here. I'm going to ask a quick question because this will let you know how like a, a hard money lender or any lender or any, any investor is going to look at it. If you're buying a property for $200,000, I don't care where it is, and you're putting $100,000 into it, and you're outselling it for $350,000, what's your actual profit? 20 or 30. 20 or 30. Okay. The closest that I heard was a 10000 which I would probably still say is wrong. And the reason for that is carrying cost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Interest, taxes, insurance, closing costs on the front end, potentially 10% mm -hmm. out sale. That's $35,000 on the out sale at a $350,000 out sale cost, right? That's 15000 without taking everything else into consideration. These are the little nuances when you call me, when you text me, when you email me, or if it's Tammy, if it's Andre, or if it's Vicky, or it's somebody else that you know that's in this business, they're going to immediately look at this deal. Mm -hmm. So that's why the four things you want to get, address, purchase price, rehab, and ARV. It makes sense. Loan application, if you want to go on the website, if you want to call me, if you want to email me, happy to give it to you. A little bit too much information, I think, personally. Looking at the deals, from a hard money standpoint, you've used ACC. They're pretty quick at getting to uh, Who do you use over there? Uh, Robert sometimes. I mean, he, he's the big boss, right? He's the owner. Yeah. Uh, uh, John. Okay. Yeah. So you call John, you package the deal, you make it pretty, right? You don't just call them and say, I need money. You've got a great property. You, you make it look pretty. Locate the right deal, guys. No, what, what I do is I, I just give them the four basic information that you requested, and they'll tell me whether it's a good deal or not. You know. Quickly? Uh, yeah. So you know if you're putting in the contract or not. Right. They, you know if you need a letter from me, mm -hmm. right? Right. You know, Kojo, right? Right, Kojo. Kojo uh, is pre-approved for a million dollars for this property located at, it's a pre-approval, it means nothing, sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't want to shatter anybody and dreams, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it means nothing, right? A pre-approval means nothing. Just like you can go online and you can go ahead and you can get a proof of funds letter, right? Mm -hmm. Pay 50 bucks, 100 bucks, I don't know what you're paying for these days. Free. Doesn't mean anything. Free, even better. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything, at least from my perspective, because you know what? Unless you see a bank statement that mm -hmm. says Kojo, and it shows money in it, yeah. it doesn't mean that much, okay? An ACC, I don't know, you know, what they write, I know Blue Water, we write a letter, I'll even contact the listing agent. I fight to get you the deal. And the reason for that is, I want the loan. If it's a good deal, I want the loan on it. So, making sure that you're aligned. Getting approved. Locate the right deal, <clears throat> okay? I think for some of you that were here earlier, I said I have a wall in my office, and pe I tell people to come in and just throw it, you know, throw it against it to see if it sticks. Do it at your own house, your office, your car. If it doesn't stick, if it's really that questionable, probably not the best deal, so try locating the right deal. Second thing, make sure that you know how you're getting out of the deal. Okay, if you're new to this and you're looking to buy a property and you think you're going to refinance it, you're going to turn it into all these, these apartments, you're going to do this wonderful stuff, which people have done. They've hit grand slams, home runs, whatever you want to call it. You can do it. But make sure the exit's right, because I'm not, I'm not going to be in a loan for 15 years, right, until you stabilize this 50, 500, 1,000 unit property. Okay? Make sure there's a game plan. Karen's going to get a refinance because Karen has the best credit score and works for every you know, government agency and gets paid a million dollars. Julie does the same thing. David, same thing. You guys got it? We're good. Demonstrate market knowledge and experience. And you call me up and you say, I think it's, I don't know, is it 
Is it Petworth? Is that, is that what it is? Petworth, maybe? No, I'm not really sure where the property is. Probably not the best conversation you're going to have. If you don't know where a property is, be up front. I'm new. I don't get it. I need some help. Come to my office. Go out and get a cup of coffee. We get a bite to eat. It's, once again, it's a relationship that we're building. <laughs> if, you, if you have some cash, let me know you have cash. If you have credit, let me know that you have good credit. Be open. Be honest. Because that's all we really care about. For those of you who have been in the business long enough and those of you who haven't, there's two things that you'll learn from that openness and honesty. Thing. A, every borrower is a liar. <laughs> Everybody laughs because it's true. And every lender is an idiot. Right? Because I believed you. So openness, and openness, honesty, it helps. Okay? It makes it so the process runs a lot smoother. And it also makes it so we can work with you to get to you to where you need to be. 15 and 5 is not going to work for you on this one, Julie. But it's having that, the relationship. It's having it where we are open, we're honest, we're able to get each other on the right, you know, on the right path. Communication, performance, obviously. And last one, if you are going to really package a deal for somebody, really package it. Don't, don't, you know, sixth grade, you know, spelling book kind of thing where you kind of just scribble through it and you hand it in. Really take some time. Show that you've actually done some due diligence with it. If you're new to it, I can show you how to package. It's really not that hard. The right package really will get you very far. Even if it's a shady-ish deal, it's got a little hair on it, the fact that we know about it, we are able to go in there and cut some of it off. We're able to make it work a lot of the time. Um, you all, the deal analyzer. I don't think he's not here. Brian, do you know if that, if that has that been sent out? Are people doing the deal analyzer? Do you know? Um, if, if you're a deal uh, member plus, I think they have the actual right. analyzer. For those of you that expose. are member plus, deal maker plus. There's a deal analyzer, okay? That I, I kind of put together, okay, with Andre and. Tim. It's easy to use. I don't know if any of you have used it before. I don't know if any of you have seen it before. But it is very easy, and it lets you find out pretty much the whole kit and caboodle on it. It'll let you know the max, you know, what your real maximum offer can be. It'll let you know what you're actually going to get as a profitability on it. I don't know if people, when I said 10% out sale cost, knew that that was something that a lot of people play with because you've got listing agent fees, you've got your own closing costs, and then that lovely, lovely, you know, uh, little gift that people like to give to the uh, the buyers to make sure that they can close. Three, three um, so this is this is what I use in my office. This is my sources and uses. This gets me the full breakdown on the entire deal. When you call me up, I can pull this up, or I can just do it in my head, and I run it through. After repair value, and this one. Let's say it's in a neighborhood that we're having a little issues with, we only go to 60%. Maximum loan amount. Then you're going to run through everything else. Purchase price, rec, transfer, funding, legal, title, so on and so forth. Even putting up your rehab reserve. Six months of interest. It will go through the whole thing for you. It'll tell you how much cash you might need to bring to the table. It'll show you your profitability. I mean, if you came here and that's all you got tonight, I mean, at least me, for everyone that, that I've had it, where I've shown it to or given it to, or anybody else that's ever used it or seen it, it it's that that's worth it alone. So every time you go and you are running your deals, you know if you're going to have something good or not. This one alone, let's go back to this. You buy it for 135. You're putting 65 into it. Our loan's 210. You're coming with 28 thousand dollars to make a 30% profit after return. You make it $80,000. If anybody wants me to give them 30 to give me 80, I'm okay with that. Okay? Um, best thing to do now is kind of went all over on the spider web kind of guy. Maybe it's the ADD, ADHD or whatever. Um, I want to have an open question 
you know, and, and conversation time, if it's extensions, if it's the prepayment, which we spoke about, inspections, terms, appraisal, you kind of name it. We're, you know, we can go through anything and everything that we go through. How about the paperwork? Do you guys do all the, the mortgages and the promissory notes and all that business mm -hmm. too? We have, um, the way that we're structured, maybe I'll give you the 30 seconds of who we are. That might be helpful. <laughs> um, Blue Water was established about six years ago. Okay? There's two principals of the company, Jason Muge and Neil Simon. Uh, I grew up with Neil and his family. I've known Jason for a long time. And they had me come on board to build this residential platform that they didn't have. Um, they were primarily, or were only, a commercial lender. Commercial lending markets back six years ago, as some might be aware, were pretty good, but it kind of fell off the cliff. Um, 90, 95% of our business now is residential. Um, we have, on our office, we have me, we hired um, a, another originator. Um, we have a, uh, we have our CFO, we have her assistant, we have a um, acquisitions person on site. Oh yeah, uh, we also have a, um, we'll say office manager, but it, this ever goes and you meet Nura. She's not the office manager, she's the queen bee. Um, and basically what we do is we lend. That's all we do. We all have a background in finance or real estate in one way or another, everybody. Um, our paperwork, what's done is we have an attorney that we deal with, that we've been dealing with for a very long period of time. He puts everything together for us. He's, um, he's a really good guy. And I'm not saying a really good attorney, I'm saying guy first because he'll talk to you, he'll, he'll walk you through things. You got questions, he'll, he'll, he'll make sure, oh, I don't know if I should do my LLC this way or that way. That, I mean, he's, he's been in the business for a long time. He's worked with some of the bigger uh, lenders out there as well. Um, we have certain title companies that we like to work with because they're familiar with hard money. For some of you that are new to this business and you want to use, you know, Janet or if you want to use Mike or whoever it is, that whatever title company it is, if they're not familiar with hard money, they, there's some intricacies that can really come up and bite you in the rear. And if they don't record correctly, if they're not quick enough or they're using the, the, the new HUD one instead of the HUD one they should be using, whatever it might be, there can be issues. So we, we, uh, we've uh, aligned ourselves with certain uh, title companies. And not only are those title companies really good at what they do, they're also very knowledgeable. They work out a lot of title issues, a lot better than some of the other guys out there. Um, so we have, we have those relationships. Um, so that's kind of the paperwork piece of it. Um, what else, what else? Um, do you use your own appraisers, or somebody, does somebody use their own appraiser, or do you stay use yours, or? We like to use an appraiser that we're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, and just like you all, you're gonna wanna use a team member that you're comfortable with. <clears throat> you know, you're, it's your money to, to, to either gain or to lose. You wanna align yourself with the right team. The, the appraiser that we use, typically, he has been in business for an extremely long period of time. He does DC, Maryland, Virginia, works for some of the larger banks that you all are very familiar with. He's very quick at getting information back to us, and he knows what an ARV is. Mm. If you've ever spoken to appraisers and said, can I get the ARV? They go, the huh? <laughs> the what? He's turning the house into condos? Is he gonna do that? No, no, don't, don't, don't do the questions. Here's the plans, let's, let's move it forward. Yeah, everybody, everybody on our team is, is really good at you become part of the team, is what, what it comes down to. Um, what else about us? Um, we do close very quickly. Um, we do lots of workarounds, lots of workouts. Um, the only goal is to do good deals. And if you have a good deal, you need the money. We have a lot of money, and we're happy to put it out on the street for you. It's, I mean, it's pretty basic. I mean, you have it where there's a lot of lenders out there that all know that come to us because they need capital and they know who we are and they know how we underwrite and they know that we're actually stick to our guns and work together kinds of guys. Uh, you guys have to have questions. There has to be stuff. Please. Uh, I'm interested in this 100% financing. Can you tell us about a deal you did recently? By all means. Um, gentleman that uh, recently closed, and what, I'm trying to think of the number, so hold on just a second. The basic
basic gist is the gentleman was buying the property at below market value. I don't know if you all are MRIS, MLS, or you know, not on door to door, floor to floor, or anything like more kind of people. But he bought it off the market, which is which is the way that I think most people are getting good deals or a wholesale kind of deal. Um, what happened is he bought it. I'm trying to remember the numbers, but I can give you example numbers. He's buying it for $450,000. And it was a full gut, and he was adding an addition to the back because he needed, and he also had to have a pet coat come out or, and do like a new bus on the back, all this fun stuff, and it cost him 200 So he was in at 650 His out sale was a million dollars. We came up with $650,000 for him. That's 100%. He came to the table with closing costs and points. We've also had it where people have come to us and said, I don't have a dime to make. I got a great deal. And we, of course, say, You want to wholesale it? No, 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 I want a piece of the action. So we'll fund the entire thing. They can do the rehab on their own if they have the experience. We do the rehab. It just depends on what the deal is. And they don't come with any cash, but they're not going to make as much of an upside because raise your hand if you're all risk. That's us. So 100% happens 99, 95, 90% of the time. It just depends. If you're buying it right, it should be pretty much 100% of the time. And you have your own construction crew. If, if we're doing the acquisition on it, like a joint venture is an easy way of looking at it. If we're doing some sort of a joint venture, yes, we have our own crews that can take care of it. Our primary business, though, is to loan you the money, walk away a little bit so you take more of the risk, and, you know, let you make it. Because it's actually better for us to do a ton of loans than it is to do a few of the on our own. Yeah, I, I have a been late, so... The money's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not it. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, do you consider yourself a hard money lender or just a lender that deals with creative financing? And if you are a hard money lender, what are your interest rates? We are hard money. We're bridge. We're direct. Whatever you want to call us. Um, our rates, depending on the deal, are anywhere between 12 and 16 percent with three to six points. For those of you here that are starting out, we're typically a 15 and 5 lender. I will promise you this. Bring me a deal within the next 30 days, and I will go 14 and 4 with you. You bring me two deals in 30 days, I'll go 13 and 4 with you. You say bring a deal in 30 days? 30 days, I'll go 14 and 4 with you. 14 and 4. A little better than ACC. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm interested. <laughs> Do you guys do any commercial at all anymore? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. We recently, what, like, um, what kind of things do you find? Uh, last week we did a 44 unit uh, that we closed on. Um, Apartments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 44 units. And the, the borrower is turning it into 47 units is what they're reconfiguring it as. Um, we've also done an acquisition piece, not the construction piece, on a land deal where they are the takeout. Actually, sorry, that one is a acquisition and fine and acquisition acquisition and construction on it. It's going to be where the gentleman owned a, a piece <coughs> here and there was another nice piece and there was a lot behind it. And he's actually expanding his his business, his real estate portfolio and building it. It's a three story. So he's doing retail on bottom uh, and office on, on the top two floors. So I personally I like commercial. It's just a little bit more difficult to find those right deals, as, as you can see. When you do comps, do you do, what is more important? Like, for the days, do you, how many days do you put? Depends on. <laughs> Depends on the deal. If you're looking at a, at a fix and flip, that you're, you know, we're a six month, right? Typically, 180 days is the time frame that you want to work that we want to look within this, pardon, within the CMA. It allows, it allows just a closer nugget. Because if you go through with like the, the 360, you go through with the year, the year's a long time, guys. Something that closed November of last year, the area could, could have changed or, you know, whatever the reason is. So I like to, I like, when I run my CMAs, I'm at about a buck 80. All right, what about bedrooms? Uh, can you do five and four? bedrooms together or it has to be five to five, four to four? No, it can, it can be okay. varied. And um, 
do you do subdivision? Do you do a map? Um, you an agent? Yeah. Okay. So but I mean, I go, on a for deals, I go on the polygon. So just for doing this today, right. I go right? on a polygon and I go within a very small radius. Okay. I don't use radius. I don't do that. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. Different neighborhood. Okay. A different property. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a single family detached compared to a row house. They're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do I do a smaller area. Uh, it gives a more realistic view of what your comps are going to be. Um, there are times that you have to go out, depending on where you are, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, you do have to go a little bit further. Because if it's an established neighborhood, let's say Woodbridge. Anybody invest in Woodbridge? No? Okay, great. Uh, Woodbridge <laughs> is, usually they have pretty established neighborhoods. And what happens is, if you don't go out further enough, you don't usually get a whole lot of comps because people sit there and live there and pardon, but die there. You know, this is these are these are real neighborhoods. These aren't you know transient. You know, these aren't like turning over kinds of properties. So, yeah, the smaller you can go in, I think the better vantage point that you get. What about square footage difference? Yeah, you have to compare the square footage of the property. You wanna if you're going to have a five bedroom, three and a half bath. And you're comparing it to a two bedroom, one and a half bath. The five bedroom is 3,200 square feet, and the, the smaller one's only 850 square feet. I don't know what it is. Yeah. You gotta, you know, you do wanna do apples to apples. Do you think a range of like a thousand square foot difference would that work, or is that, the, you know what I'm saying? Five hundred feet. It depends. Well, I mean, a thousand square feet. <laughs> is, nine hundred square foot. A thousand square feet is, is a pretty big difference. In the yeah. so you know, I mean, if you go to DC right now and you're going to buy a okay. condo that's eight hundred and fifty square feet yeah. compared to eighteen hundred and fifty square feet, there's going to be a large difference in the value of right. that property. Yeah. And if there isn't, call me because I'd like to buy the big one. <laughs> Well, we were putting in square feet, you know, we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the difference here? Say it again? I mean, we're like trying to do square footage, you know, because... I mean, what you can do is, I mean, it's one of those things where you're going to have to look at all the caveats of it, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to have a, a licensed appraiser go out and he or she is going to do the real analyzing of it. The analysis is very important, but for you as the agent, apples to apples is always a good thing. If you're, if you're looking at a Rambler compared to a two-story that's got an extra couple thousand square feet to it, you, you can't think they're going to be the same in value. Mm -hmm. You know, unless it's a, a, a shell that's been burned out to a renovated home, possibly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, um, if you come across one, call me. I'll walk with you. Okay. I'll walk with you. Well, we come across five, six today. I mean, you know, that's what I'm thinking of. We're trying to... Yeah, and you can also tie them up. If you're not that. sure, still tie them up and give yourself an escape. You know? Mm -hmm. And you put down, okay, here, great. And you have a three day feasibility study. Brian, I only have three days. What do I do? You know? Okay, I'll give you about 15 minutes. We'll run the CMA, we'll run the numbers, and we'll do everything if you want. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that's, that's just. Frank, could you talk a little bit about your JV opportunities, how those work? Sure. Um, JVs. Um, very basic. Find an app. You find a property. For those that don't know, JV is a JV a stands for joint venture. Joint venture. There you go. Um, I apologize. Uh, so a joint venture is basically where we're working as a team, just like we were before. But the only difference is, is that we're going to be part of the, we'll say part of the upside on the deal. Typical structure of a, a JV relationship is still we're going to do it as a loan. Okay, we need to securitize, you know, the loan to something. Um, you find the asset, We get it, you get it under contract as ABC, LLC, and or signs. I don't care what it is. We, we all become part of the LLC, you know, in case of default, we become, you know, the managing partner, or we are the managing partner up front. Are you going to be doing the construction? Are we going to be doing the construction? You know, what's the scope on it? And then lastly, what do you want out of it? You want 65% of the upside? You want 50 you only want 10%? You know, it's a negotiation. It's a, it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys can look at our website and everything else, and you'll, the people that are somewhat new to the business ask for a matrix. Or do you have guidelines? Yeah, they're all here. <laughs> tell me about your deal. I'll tell you if it makes sense. Hard money is a makes sense thing. So the JV opportunities, you can find them 
We'll look at them. If it works for everybody, we're good. If it doesn't work, I might be able to tell you somebody so that you can wholesale it to as well. The, the reason I ask is sometimes um, I'll run into somebody who doesn't have a lot to put down, but they've got the experience and they can do the deal and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And I, I was wondering if that might be something where they could maybe split the profits with you and, and oh, that course. kind of thing. Is that is, is anybody here not to make money? <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Great. You know, I'll take the gas out of your game, too. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that... Well, I'm not making money here tonight. Well, no, no. This is your real estate groupie. Look at that. Look at that. You measure up to everybody. Oh. Oh. But no, on a serious note, you know, we're all here to make money, and if I was to say to you, you know, oh, you don't have any money, David, it doesn't make sense. You found a good deal, man. Just because you don't have the experience doesn't doesn't bother me. You know, gentleman right next to you has four thousand. She's got ten thousand. She's got seven. I mean, you guys can come together. You you have mentors. Okay. You have people who have been in this business for a long time. I mean, Tammy will tell you about the wonderful deals that she comes across in the the huge multifamily stuff, right? And she might need some cash, so you can become a partner of hers. Learn and. All we're here for, once again, is we're partners on everything that we do in a sense, right? If you default on the loan, what happens to me? I now have a defaulted loan. Mm -hmm. I have to get out of it. I have to find a way to get paid back. It's basic, right? So, JV, everything. Just, we're here to make money. It doesn't matter what your experience level is. It doesn't matter if you have cash in the game. It doesn't matter if, if any of that. If it makes sense, it makes sense. Yes, Brian, I wanted to ask you, does Blue Water limit your lending and or now uh, JV to a particular region or states? You do. We're a DC, Maryland, and Virginia lender. Okay, only. Only. Okay. Uh, as I was telling Julie earlier, one of the things that, uh, that we believe in is the, the further outside of your own backyard you go, the dumber you get. That's, that's us from a lending standpoint. If you find an Ohio property, an Arkansas property, I don't care where it is. If that's what you want to do, go for it. If you get financing, go for it. I think that's great. But for us, it's just it's too high risk. Thank you. It's too high risk. In the JV, do you, can you divide the funds? We'll, we'll, we'll put a, I mean, yeah. I mean, we can, we can get the contract. It's an easy way of putting it. Mm -hmm. um, we can show money. We can. Yeah, put the deposit down. We can find a deal. Then, you know, the next step is. If you find a deal, and how about we give an example? A gentleman calls me up that I've done a deal with, a deal loan on. The guy did an okay deal. He kind of got stuck, didn't understand DCRA isn't just you walk in and just wave to people and they throw you, you know, all the help that you want. So we had to come in and kind of help him. Gentleman then came back to us and said, "Hey, I found a really good deal, but you know, I, I, I don't know how to tie it up. I need help." We came in, we put we put the contract in with the gentleman. We did everything that needed to be done on it, and all the gentleman did is wait till we sold the property, and it was we, him, us, sold the property, and he's the one after closing that got a check. <clears throat> so if you do find a good deal, you can either wrap it up yourself if you want to. If you need help, call me. Call your mentor. Call you know your business partner, whoever it is that you need to deal with. Do you uh, use things for like client trust? Not typically. I mean, as you know, I said before, we I like to look at lending as a kiss business. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> That's really what it is. <laughs> If anybody's trying to overcomplicate things, I don't know. I went to a really good school. I'm, I'm, I think I'm, 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 you know, moderately, averagely, not super smart. I don't care what that is. The simple fact is, is that if you're trying to overcomplicate something, and something's trying to become more complicated than it needs to be, get the hell out. It's the same thing. Is something too good to be true? Probably not true, right? Okay. Um, it's really a basic game. The hardest thing about real estate investing is not the contractor, not the title company, 
not where you're getting the funds, not the market, you know, oh my God, is it going to go up or down? It's finding the actual deal. Right? <laughs> Want me to take a bus tour? Want me to send you some wholesale deals? It's fine. You need to find a deal. You don't jump into something without looking. You make sure that you have a team there. Maybe not all the contractors, maybe not all the attorneys, not the CPA, not, not everybody that you really need, but somebody that's going to be there to help you walk through it. I mean, I personally have saved people lots and lots and lots of money. I've said no to a deal. I say no to more deals than I think anybody should. But it's because I know that it's not going to be a good deal for a borrower. I'd rather not make a dime and get somebody pissed off at me. They go somewhere else and they call me back in six months and say, I, I did the deal. And I say, congratulations, how did it work out? I lost some money, but you know, now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> now That's I know great. what they did. And if you want to invest $5, 10 15 20 30 50 $100,000 of your own cash into it, to throw it out, that's fine. I'd rather you give it to me. I'll give you a return on it. I'll put it into a deal that we have with whomever it is, and we can help walk through the deal together. And we're a very different lender. You've got loan-to-own lenders. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that term. <laughs> yeah. The guy who goes into the deal, okay? And let's say you're buying a property for 100000 You need to put 100 into it, and you think you're selling it for $500,000. I know that that property is only worth two fifty, so I'm only going to give you $100,000. How much am I in it? A hundred thousand. You're coming with closing costs and points, and I'll make you come with an interest reserve. I'll make you come with all of the rehab funds that you need, and it's all just sitting there, right? So when you fail because you don't have the experience, you've told me that. I don't care because I'm in on a hundred thousand dollars for a two fifty property. I don't like to do that because you're never coming to me again, and Julie's now knows that you and I did this and she's pissed off and she's never going to come to me and David's not going to be happy and then Karen's not going to be happy and, co and you keep going. For me, I'd rather say go to, and I can say some names potentially, and let them do it for you. I don't want to. You then have it where the guys that are just in enough that they're not a loan to own guy, but they just want to be in just a little bit. We'll go 50% LTV, 50% uh, ARV. You know, you can probably skirt by with, you know, using your, your credit cards to, to get the construction done. Me, I'd rather fund you what you need to get you to the point of the end. If you can't get to the end, why start? Is there anything else that I can touch upon or babble about? So, I, I have a question. He has a... And if you don't mind me bringing up your... Oh, yeah, you guys can bring up scenario. deals, by the way. I'll go over your deals with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, he got a deal under contract, and he's been working really hard for six months to get a deal. <laughs> Shaking your head is not a good thing. Contract was voided. And, oh, and he, he, you know, he worked to get it under contract, and the guy said earnest money is $1,000. Yep. And three days later? Yep. Three days later, he says, oh, I need $2,000 earnest money. What's the game that they were playing? Did you give him $1,000? No. No. It was some sort of a notice. Monday, he wanted, uh, I, I, I gave him a, a, a copy of a check for $1,000. Wednesday, he wanted $2,000. And he wanted it by Friday. Can I ask you a few questions? Where's the property located? You want to give me an address? District Heights. Okay. How much was the pickup on? How much were you going to buy it for? Um, 50,000. 50,000. 50,000. How much was your renovation? Didn't need that. How much, what were you going to do with the property? Hmm? What were you doing with the property? Wholesale. Were you selling? You're going to hold it? Yeah. Wholesale, wholesale it. Wholesale it. Mm -hmm. How much were you going to wholesale it for? 65. Okay. So. What's the what? ARV? It doesn't, ARV was about 115. doesn't matter what the ARV is. I'm like not even thinking if it's a wholesale deal for him. And if it, it, you know, wholesale is a little bit different. People play with those numbers are ghost numbers to me. So somebody's going to say, I'll give you 55 for it. And you're going to say no. And then somebody comes up and gives you 52. And you go, okay, 55 sounds good. You know, there's no, it's not an end-all, be-all on that. Um, 115. If you guys, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. 
the earnest money deposit that you are putting down, I'll ask questions. Has your EMD deposit, has your earnest money, has it been cashed? Put your hand if anyone's was cashed before settlement. Yeah. Really? So you mean if you wrote a check, they're not going to cash it? Yeah, they, they cash it. Right away? It went to the attorney. They, 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 they always do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always? Not always. Anybody think differently? Yeah. No, I don't. It's amazing. <laughs> I well, get them back. It, it, it's, uh, it's supposed to be cash. Plus, plus. It should, what you are supposed to do with an EMD is it should be cash. It right. should be cash, right? But many a times it's not. So the thing is, depending on how the game works, you put in a check, sometimes it's not cash. I'm not telling you to do this. Please understand that. You all do your investing how you want to do it. I'm just simply saying, if you have a, a sweetheart of a deal, find the money somehow. I mean, I put it found it just a, just a short notice. Right. It'll give me two days to get the extra thousand dollars and have it by Friday. Well, couldn't find what was the EMD in the contract? Did they have the 2000 in that stated in the contract? Or they added an addendum on the contract. They counter-offered it. Counter it was a so, in that situation, I mean, there's a lot that you can do in there. Um, is, this, is this your first one that you, you were? Yeah, it was my first one. I didn't have it by Friday, so the contract. Do you have? Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody that you're working with? Right, I did. Right. And this individual was unable to assist? No, not at that time, no. He said if I didn't know that at the time, but I didn't know that at the time. I guess I do. It's, it's a wholesale kind of a deal. Notice. It's it's a contract. People <clears throat> play these games all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, real estate is a funny game. Really funny game. I mean, you want to tell some horror stories or <laughs> we, we good? You know, I mean... There, there's a lot of great stuff in real estate, you know. Everybody calls it the GA, the bean, that rates, whatever it is. And you're in real estate. It's really easy, right? No, it's mm -hmm. it's not at all. I don't know how many of you are real estate investors for the past umpteen years and never done a deal. It, it's, it's hard. It's not that easy. So people are going to play games. People are always going to do stuff. You know, oh, you, you know, I'm buying it for 50 and you want me to put down 2000 I'll give you fifty-two thousand and only put down a thousand. Okay, you just made two extra thousand dollars. Leave me alone. Sign the contract. Sign the contract. And they still don't want to do it. Okay, that's fine. You know, you, you, you'll lose one. Sure. It's going to happen, and it sucks. Please don't understand. I mean, please understand that. I, I do understand that. There is nothing worse, especially in a wholesale game, when you're sitting there and you just go like this. Fifteen. Fifteen grand. I'm gonna make it. All I need to do is sell it to somebody else. Put it on somebody's website. I'm making fifteen grand. It, but you know, it happens. I'm very sorry you lost it. It sounds it was as, as you said. Well, I've had people that have said, okay, um, you're going over the time and you want an extension. So in order to do an extension, that they'll want more yeah. EMD. But for him to turn around within three days. And increase the EMD. I mean, is that something that's common? Did somebody else come to this person <coughs> and say, I'll give you $60,000 for the property? Yeah. Did somebody come up to you and say, you know, I mean, it's a multi-bid contract. I mean, Karen and I spoke earlier today. There was a property. I know the area. They had it on the market for X, and everybody bid it up. Right? She walked. Okay, that's fine. It's the same thing. Anybody, you guys go on the MLS. See that property, and you're like, it's only 160 in that area. No, it's not 160. It's so everybody goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it gets bid up to 350, and you go, what the hell just happened? <laughs> right? It's because it gets their attention. So I mean, real estate is is a game. It's a strategic game. It's I don't know if anybody plays chess, but sometimes you have to play chess. With with the with the with the owner, I don't know if anybody does the, the knocking on the doors. You gotta find a common ground, you know. Yeah, but in, in your situation, I mean, the, the seller wants two thousand, mm -hmm. and you can come out with twelve hundred. Counter offer said, "I'll give you twelve hundred. You, you know, it's back and forth, oh, yeah, and you, you meet 
somewhere in the middle, you know, where the two of you are. Right right one of the things you don't have to accept, you know. One of the things that you might want to try, just a, a piece for the future, is go back and forth. Keep them, keep them wrapped. Yeah. Keep them wrapped up. You know, I can't get you a thousand dollars extra by Friday, but what I can do is I can give you twelve hundred, and that'll make it so you know we're closer to the numbers. What do you think of this? And then it's back and forth, back and forth, so you keep them tied up. Was there an agent involved? Yeah. It was the agent that asked for that additional thousand dollars. And what'd you tell the agent? Well, see, I was dealing with my team member, so and he's a listening agent, and I was communicating with him, and he was communicating with the agents. Right. And because I said okay, because I had some buyers who were interested, still, it was a time factor. He said, "Have it by tomorrow, the next day." And I'm like, "Oh, look, I just can't do it." Still. All the way up to the end of Friday, I thought I could work out something. It just didn't happen by 5 o'clock Friday, right. so I let it go. It's going to happen. I mean, right. it's the same thing that, it, you know, if you find a deal, if you find a deal, if you find a deal, if you find a deal and you think it's good, and whatever it is, you, you want to wrap it up, tie it up. Well, who did you call in the network? You know, you know Vicky. I would have called Vicky and said, "Hey, you know, I need some like two thousand dollars to to go through with this real quick. Oh. Is there somebody you know that would have?" Not at that time, no. I didn't. I, mean, well, I don't think it will work that just like that. I need two thousand from everybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have to know what kind of deal you have. You know, what are they getting back? I mean. Next time, call Brian. He'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah. The in the car. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no. What if I don't have a deal, but I know somebody that wants to have some money? What kind of chess game are we playing now? now? Huh? <laughs> Twiddling your thumb. Uh -huh. She's saying referral fee, right? <laughs> we're not real estate agents. We're not licensed mortgage brokers. We're not licensed mortgage bankers. We're not any of that stuff. Okay? We are private individuals lending our money. You have individuals that are looking for money. Let me know. You can become a broker. Not, I mean, I'm on TV right now or camera. You can become a broker and make <laughs> money. You know, I mean, if you have a deal from somebody else, you can bring it to me. You, you let me tell you how you can make money. Find your own deal. I'll finance it. You fix it and flip it. Money to you. You find a deal, you don't want to do the deal, you can wholesale it to me or somebody else that I know that's always looking for deals. You make money. You can find a deal through somebody else that's looking for money. I can do the loan and you can become the broker and make money. It's, I mean, there's a million ways of making it happen here. It's the same thing. As I said earlier, I have lenders that call me up and ask me to fund their deals. You know these lenders. You know them. It's that simple. Can you guys kind of table on this? You know, we're kind of short today. Or this month. Or this year we've been short. We, I don't know how you guys are raising your capital, but you have a lot more than we have. Can you help us out? Yeah, it's fine. They make a piece of the deal, and we make our piece of the deal. Don't, don't be greedy money on the table, you know all these things, right? Play fairly, you know, whatever it is, real estate. It's not, it, it's not a hard game to understand. It's just, a, it's just hard to, to do a lot of the time because you don't find all the right deals. What are you offering investors in your company? Is that if you oh, if you want to invest money in, in, into, mm -hmm. into Blue Water, depending on what it is, there's, there's a high rate of return, a high rate. Secured by first trust notes. Is there a range? I'd say we had a fund that we raised some time ago that was getting anywhere between 12 to 18 percent annual return. I don't know what you guys are getting right now, but it's pretty okay. good. Okay. What's the. Uh, no, you I'm just. Who's here? <laughs> I, no, I, I was just thinking there's a group out of Phoenix that keeps calling me. And Do you they. Want money? They. they raise money and their thing is I think it's 10 to 15 percent a year and after three years they close out with usually 
eighty percent a year average return or something. An eighty percent return. Average over the three years. So you get the ten or fifteen percent normally. And then after three years, they've got like no, no. It, it does, but they've been doing it for twenty years. Let me ask you, it's a company. Yeah. Do you mind me asking you now? Yeah, it's a company. Name. Let me start over. Do you mind me asking the name of the company? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I got it in my email. I, I, I've talked with them off and on for two years. They, if you're talking to a company, and once mm -hmm. again, everybody does their own thing. You guys don't have to use my money. I can tell you that there are a lot of companies out there. I mean, did I say earlier five of them when we were talking? Yeah. You can use anybody you want to use. But if you're talking about a deal, if I was to hear this, just the basics, you invest $100,000 for three years. This is, this is from a loan. These are loans. This isn't like somebody buying an asset and they're, they're stabilizing it and they're going to give you a return. 80% return in a three-year period? They're, they, I mean, I'm trying to figure out. No, what they're doing is they're buying and flipping. They have a, a whole process with a whole group of people, is their claim, that they basically are picking up properties in the Phoenix area, and they buy them, and they're flipping. So if you they, looked at $100,000 that you invested, mm -hmm. okay, you are going to get $80,000 back. Uh, your 100 plus another 80000 right? So 180000 they're going to give you back in three years. Mm -hmm. That means there's $20,000, right, to, to make it a full 100%. How is anybody in the world making, I mean, maybe they are, please don't get me wrong. How, is, how are they making that much money? Right. They have to be buying <laughs> properties like this yeah. and selling them. To the that is their food. claim. I haven't put money they, into it yet, but, uh, you know, I've, I've looked at them. And, and their claim that was that what they're... It, it does work out if, if they're doing what they claim they're doing, which is they understand their market, they've got a lot of feelers out, right. so they're, they're buying properties and then they're fixing them up and flipping them. And they keep the, they've got their own crew. You can and do it. I say more power to you. You don't think that if you really have a crew growing in an area where there's a lot of real estate transactions and a What's the average rate of return? Phoenix? What's the average rate of return? No, Phoenix? Forget, forget that. Forget the area that it's in. Once again, <laughs> well, no matter what the area is. I'm, this is, I'm not putting them down, but I'm just trying to figure this out. What is the average rate of return that an investor gets on a deal? 20%. I'd go with 20. I'd probably actually go with 15. 15 percent. Right. Add another 65 percent on that, on average, to the deals. Don't get me wrong, I've seen people pick up sweetheart deals. I mean, like, just deals that I'm like, I don't know how you found this, or who you killed, or where the body is. <laughs> but, I mean, that's amazing. But if they're really doing this, and don't get me wrong, they could be. I don't know who the company is. I don't know much about Phoenix. Right. I don't know, you know, much about, you know, anything about Phoenix. But if they're really giving you an 80% return, please call me, because we're going to shut down shop. And we're going to invest all of our money in that. I'll pass it on to you. I'm being 100% serious. No, and I, I am too. Right. You know, these... Uh, because I, you, why would anybody do... I mean, everybody here would stop, I mean, from my example, would stop doing real estate transactions. If you're truly securitized, if you're in a safe position, if you're getting an 80% return, which is approximately, what, 27, 28% return on your money on an annualized basis? Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to calm down, so it's probably going to be 23%. Not that. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but from the standpoint, especially when things were going, of doing construction, I can see how that can easily pop out. If you know what you're doing, it, and I looked at new construction for a while, and you could get easily those returns on new construction, because what you're doing is you're thinking that dollar is tied up for a year. But if it's only tied up for three months you and it takes you three oh, to four months to build yeah, you and you're getting the fifteen percent every three yeah. months on it. But are you are you are they splitting profits with you too, or is it just Yeah, like, that's just how you do. Interest? They're they're yeah, buying so they're and flipping. It's, an, yeah. it's a different it's a different game. That's a different yeah. game. Yeah. And they do I mean, once again, I, I mean there's guys that are making money hand over fish doing all sorts of stuff that I don't get. 
and I'm not going to try again. But if it turns out that that's what it is, you know, it's been two years that you looked at it. I, I mean, and they claim to have been in business for 20 years. They've I had people in. fly out and look at them. I jump in. So, well, they can prove it. What do you invest in now? If you don't want to ask, do you do real estate transactions currently? I have a little right. that I've done basically where I live and sold. Well, that's good. And well, the, the fallback is you live in it. Right. You know, if, if the, the worst thing is, but I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm so fairly you conservative. Do. Just do the research that you need to do yeah. on it. I mean, you and I play in the same pool quite mm -hmm. a bit, I'm guessing. And I mean, our average, let's say, would do 15 percent and five points. That's 20 percent annualized return the money one time. Okay, that means we get five more points on it. Our average rate of return is at 25. Now you're over tripling you, that. Yeah. You're just doing the funding side though, right? right. All right. So take that funding side and add to it a a side that finds the properties. So you're paying a discount, if not minimal, real estate commission. Then add and, and doing the sales for you. Right. And then add to it the uh, construction refinance side, plus uh, discounts that you get on large building material purchases. And flipping 20, 30, 40 homes a year. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doubting you, but I'm, what I'm saying is it's, it doesn't matter what your material cost is, it's what the profitability of it is. Because, you know, I can go to 84 Lumber for $125,000, they'll give me like a 1,200 square foot home, and they'll just deliver everything and they'll build it for me, let's say. And it's more along the lines of what the true profitability is, what the net is going to be of said, that of said property is. And if you were to buy a property and let's go with your 15 percent and I was to do that, you know, let's say we got a 25 percent nut on um, each deal plus a 15 percent return on it, which I don't know what that would be, but you're still looking at a 40 percent annualized. And if you were to do five, six, seven of those on a year, which you could do, I guess, you could, yeah, you could probably get up to that 80. I just, from, from who I am and from my um, standpoint, I just would say that it sounds really rich because if that's something that truly is available, I don't know why somebody wouldn't do it. The only thing well, I can think of, I have a friend who her, her husband goes and buys like bulk Rios and mm -hmm. buys them like a whole table. dirt cheap. You right. know, like buys a whole lot of them. And he can sometimes get those kind of large oh, but, yeah. but you know. You bet, yeah, you gotta, I mean, whatever, whatever yeah. the bulk is that you get, that tape that you're looking at, you're going to find some diamonds and you're going to find some stuff mm -hmm. that's still a little mushy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and those mushy ones you just drop off. So. Right. Cool. It's possible. It's just not likely. Could right. be. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's, you know, I'm not saying shoot it down by any means. I definitely look at it more. And if you've got my information, I'd be happy to take a look at it. All right. It's fine. When you said 10% outsell cost, is that like a ballpark of um, of what? <laughs> Basically, what you have when you when you outsell a property, just we're not talking about we're doing simple like single family, you know, something along those lines, not like a condo conversion, but a single family or a row house. You're going to pay a estimated. Uh, you're a real estate agent. What are you going to take for the listing? Five or uh, six? Uh, five, probably. Five. Okay. So five percent plus seller concession. Anybody? 20%? 8% right there. Mm -hmm. Then you've got your own closing costs. You do your little transfer and recce, you split it and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Call it, pardon, 1.5%. So you're now at 9.5%. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of going above. To, you know, I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. Mm -hmm. so call it 10%. So every time that you sell the property, you just have to remember that your out sale is directly uh, affecting your profitability on it. Mm -hmm. Not Don't worry about your tax income. And that's not holding cost. No. And that's not the points or okay. not holding okay. cost. That's not points. Okay. That's not if you you know if the contingency that you had in there for your rehab goes mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. you still have to make that up. You know, if there's other soft costs that weren't associated. And one other question: What about condos? Are you doing condos? We finance condos occasionally, like mm -hmm. just like one-off condos, like somebody picks it up at the auction as a, you know, we'll, we'll finance that for them. Mm -hmm. But we do a lot of condo conversions. Um, we just closed on a loan this evening. Uh, we're waiting for uh, final paperwork to come through. 
and they are building a set, six unit, six unit. The first one is a one bedroom, one bath, all the other ones are duplexes. That they're doing through and we have no problem. Did Fine. they start with bare land? No, this was, this was a row house in D.C. Uh, through uh, DCRA and everything else and found out that they're able to, they don't have to worry about the parking piece of it. It was, they got a piggyback on it, so they were able to do that. And they're building like an interesting cool car in the center. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. So where do you want to be in the process? Uh, I'm, let's say I'm looking at some property. It, it fits in your category of a, uh, maybe it's rentals or condo or something like that that would still fit in what you would be. When I'm getting in at the beginning or after I've made the offer and then run around looking for financing, which do you want to do? It's up to you. All right, so you will be in at the beginning, I'm, I'm thinking, and you If you're new to real estate investing, which a lot of you have said you are, if you don't have a mentor, if you don't have a partner, you know, whatever it is, get somebody who's got maybe a little bit more knowledge on the subject than you at the beginning. Because, for instance, if you put in a contract on a property and you put that EMD down and it's a non-refundable EMD and you go, Brian, here's the deal. And I say, I don't like it. It doesn't make sense. You think it's a 650 out sale. But if you look at the comps, it's really a 450, maybe a 480. And that spread is going to kill it. You know, you're stuck. You're going to possibly lose the EMD. So I think it's better, from my perspective, call me up beforehand. And, I mean, you can tie anything up that you want. Just make sure that you have an escape on it. If you don't have the escape on it, you're stuck. And you also have to remember that the more times that you put in offers, right, the letter that I can give you guys, and you walk away from the deal, your name kind of floats through real estate investors all over, and they go, oh, I don't want to deal with him or her. So... But getting in at the beginning is always the best, I think, because then I don't, I'm not going to say I'm going to hold your hand, I'm going to teach you how to do the whole thing, but I will let you know if it's a good deal or not. I'll let you know my true thoughts on it, as, as you found out tonight. I'm not, you know, no, I'm not a shy true. guy, so if you, do, if you do find something, call me, text me, email me. I, I'll get to you with a quickness on it from the beginning, unless you really need to tie it up and just say, Brian, you know, get to me tomorrow. No, that's fine. I just wanted to know, because some people say, until you got... You know, some money in it, I don't want to talk to you because you're not serious. Other people are... Yeah, you know, we're also, once again, we're a different kind of lender. You know, I can tell you guys the ideal situation. Do all your homework. I want to see the address. I want to see comps. I want to see pictures of the interior and exterior of the property. Um, I want to see a full rehab budget that you're going to have. Okay, I want to see a deal analyzer. I want to see it all, and I want to see the contract. I mean, th that's the ideal situation, right? Because then I just send you a letter of intent, and you sign off on the letter of intent 10 days later, or whatever it is we need to do, we close on the loan. But because you're new to the game, you might not have all that stuff. So we need to, we need to help you get to that point. Let's say I go to an auction. They want money down. I like it. I think it's rehabitable. It's in the area. So I buy it. So now I'm holding it. Uh -huh. All right. So I got it for fifty thousand. It might resell for three hundred or it's forty, seventy to fix it up, something like that. So I can then go to you, and you'll be very happy to say, "Yep, I'm willing to pull out the total amount because you loan sixty-five percent of ARV, and we're, we're well, not." You're not going to cash out on the deal. Well, that's the question. Originally, if I'd gone to you and said, "I want the money." to do this and we're way below the 65% ARV on this, right. you would have said, okay. So now that I've actually tied it up so we know the price is fixed and I've got it. Well, and let, let's do the numbers so I'm, I'm clear on this so I can give you a realistic. You're buying it for 50. Yeah, it's in foreclosure. I, uh, it's been foreclosed on. It, I bought it for 50. So the end game, you got it for 50,000. How right. much is the construction? Worst case would be 60,000. Right. So now we're at one hundred and ten thousand, and it's selling for three fifty. Okay, so you need one hundred ten thousand, right? Yeah. And I just don't want my money in it, and so I'm transferring risk is the way I'm looking at it because I can now go buy something else with that money at another so auction. So you don't want to put closing costs or points down? No, I'll I'll put that in there. Oh, yeah, but I'd finance one hundred percent. I'd do right. fifty thousand for the purchase, sixty thousand for the rehab. That's one hundred ten thousand. Here it is. 
and you have to come with closing costs and points and all the other jazz. But there is no closing cost if I've already gone through closing because I own it. Yeah, oh, you already own it. I didn't hear Right, that. I bought it in an auction. Oh, you've already bought it. Because there's well, the some of these auctions I go to and it's like 24 hours or less, we need the money now, and the pro properties are very well, cheap. Well, you've already paid cash for the deal. Right. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it depends. I mean, you still have... You know, if you want the fifty thousand back. Is All that right. Right? So I well, I put um, enough money to grab the property. Right. Uh, normally, I'd have to turn around and pull more of my money to do the rehab. Right. But instead, I want to use your money to do that. Right. And then something may come up where I want to get another one of these. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather have the, the full hundred and ten versus uh, three fifty ARV. Depends. So. It depends, but it's something you'd listen to. Right, it's something I'd listen to. I mean, you guys, I mean, if you want, tell me deals, I'll talk to you about them, because even if I can't do the deal or, you know, don't want to do the deal, I can still give you some insight, because I've been in this business long enough to let you know what I know. So, you know, what you're asking for in this situation is you bought it for 50000 you're just looking for sixty for the, the rehab. I don't know if I would cash you out fully, but I might. I mean, it's only $110,000 for a $300,000 property. Big deal. I have a $110,000 note. Right. But I mean, that's no big I'm deal. a risk-adverse person, so I'm pulling money out of a, a Roth IRA or 401k IRA. I'd rather have that money back in there. Oh, yeah. Then it's going to circle back into, 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 into the there. Field. And that then when we get the profit, it comes back. The profit comes back. So to me, I'd rather... It, it's worth... You know, if I'm going to get a hundred thousand, it's worth twenty thousand to give to you, so I don't lose the hundred thousand. The market goes again, south yeah. next week. But yeah, that's something that I would entertain. I don't yeah. know why I wouldn't. No, but, I, I. But some people would say no. I want you to have money in it. Other people are. I'll do a hundred percent if the well, loan. Well, I mean, you're still going to have clo you're still going to have to close on the new loan, so you know you'll still have a little bit in it, maybe. But I never closed on the first loan. I did all cash out of a 401k or Roth IRA. You so close on the property. I that's true. Recordation. Yeah. Transfer. Yeah. So there's you've already put. Yeah. If you do come across an, an interesting deal like that, I mean, I mean, we've had it where people, you know, my great aunts passed away and I took the property. It was just kind of, you know, deeded over to me. I didn't pay anything for it. And I want to renovate it. And I want a little cash out. Have we done the deal? Yeah. And the guys come with zero dollars to the table because there's a heck of enough equity in the deal that every single person here, I think, who has a dollar would want to invest it in the deal because it's a pretty sweet deal. Right. So somebody who, who wants to uh, invest with you, what's the minimum amount of money would you accept? I'd say 50. Huh? Probably say around 50. Okay. 50 to 100. And the reason for that, <clears throat> it's the same reason we for our loan amounts that we give out to people is typically a hundred thousand to five million ish. It's because the more the, the lower the loan amount like that we give out, it's still the same amount of work, right? Fifty thousand dollar property or a five hundred million dollar property, you're still doing a lot of work to, right. to for us to service the loan and everything else. And then for us, when people want to invest in Blue Water, we don't want, you know, too low numbers because then we have a whole lot of people. I mean to be Lot with, with everybody right now. We have individuals that are coming to us and trying to invest more money. We don't have enough deals a lot of the time. And these are these are guys that are trying to do 50, 100, 500, a million dollars at a time. Because it's always nice to just, I mean, you're talking about buying real estate and having a residual income. I mean, it's it's a note. You're, you're going to be part of a note and you're going to get a million dollars at X percent every month. We're going to stroke a check to you. Okay. What's the minimum amount of time can you uh, invest? You can go for a deal. If it turns out you want it to. Yeah. Okay. It, it just depends. I mean, right now we're not really open to, to new investors right now because we have a lot of cash that we want. But if you wanted to discuss that, we can obviously talk more about it for potential deals now, potential deals for the future. Okay. Go ahead. Can we go over like how kind of like a like a buy and hold deal would work? Like what's the deal? Buy and hold deal would work the same way as any of the other deals that we have. The only thing is the underwriting on it. The exit strategy has to be a little bit different because I need to make sure that Frank is able to get out of our loan. 